Battletech. Refractometer versus Hydrometer. Who comes out on top and what we might be using in the future. Yeah, we actually have no idea what's going to come of this. I have, I purchased a refractometer many years ago, used it in the very beginning because I thought, hey, this is cool, right? You know, it's like, look at this, look at this new gizmo and gadget. So much cooler than one of these, right? It just, it just seems that way. And it only needs like a drop versus got to pull out the whole thing. So when you're making a bunch of tests along the way, refractometer seems like the way to go. Well, I learned really, really quickly um, that there's something wrong with that theory. And that is when you get to the final gravity, you try using one of these, the numbers are all over the place. Just doesn't make any sense. And we were getting like these really off the wall. I mean, like something that should be 12 or 15% ABV was like 4%. And I'm like, but it doesn't taste like it stalled. It didn't stall. I don't understand. So then I found out, I mean, this is, this is a while back guys. I found out that once alcohol is present and you know, now it's a the moment, it's a refractometer. It doesn't actually measure the density of the liquid. It measures how light bends through it. So as alcohol is present, it changes the way the light refracts through the thing and makes it all kinds of wrong. However, there are calculators to adjust for that. The question becomes then, is it more convenient to use one of these with one drop and have to use a, th a calculator to adjust or just use a hydrometer? And which one's more accurate? Now, we don't know that the hydrometer is 100% accurate, but it is the standard that we've been using for a very long time, so I am going to use it. By the way, this is the Herculometer. We just recently tested this versus our uh, Brewer's Best, was that the name yes. of it? hydrometer that we got from Amazon that a lot of you are using, and we found that it was exactly the same. So I erred on the side of this is harder to break. So we're going to use this one today. Anyway, let's get started. So what we're going to do is we have two solutions here. One is plain water. Okay. Plain water should read 1.000 by both methods. Should. Let's find out. I probably should have put the hydrometer in there first because I always do that. And then later on, I'm wishing, you know, that I did because it spills out like it's, oh, did I, nope, I didn't. So close. It's like that. All right, I got it. So let's see here. Now, again, we are not at the actual calibration numbers for either device. We are using real world conditions that we always use. Therefore, this is consistent to our every day. And to me, consistency is more important than accuracy sometimes. If I do the same thing the same way at the same temperature every single time, I know, relatively speaking, how consistently accurate or inaccurate I am. If I did this at 60 degrees and then tomorrow I'm using our 75 or 78 degree tap water, it doesn't tell me anything. So that's why we're doing this this way. And today it is reading, that's dead on at 1.000. It's just the meniscus, which is that line, you know, is right at 1.000. I did learn something from our other test. The 250 mil cylinder, the meniscus is wider. Therefore, it's actually easier to read, but it does take more larger of more larger. It does take more of a sample to make it work. So it's not quite as useful, I think, but it, there's something to that. I don't know. You just learn so much when you start doing things like this. And I'm going to dump this out because I just know me. I'm able to spill it, knock it over. You know, I talk with my hands. Part Italian. What can I say? And to those of you who don't believe me, yes, I really am. Part Italian. Anyway, so now I want to take a refractometer reading. Now, this refractometer will have a link below. I got it from Amazon um, many years ago. I have not calibrated it in some time, but this should actually do it because this is filtered water. They say to use distilled water. Well, I don't have any distilled water on hand, so I'm just gonna use filtered water. It should read 1.000. This exact one does bricks, which is just percentage of sugar in water or liquid and specific gravity. So we'll get to see both and I'll show you. So we go one drop right on the thing, the screen, whatever you wanna call it and you push this down and it just flattens it out. And then you hold it. I got to take my glasses off for this. Hold it up to the light. Oh, it's not even focused. There we go. And it is reading straight on 1.000 or zero bricks. Okay. So suffice to say, I would say this is calibrated to correct at this point, right? So what I want to do is wipe this off because if I don't, it could interrupt 
further readings. I'm going to put my glasses back on because trying to look at the camera, I'm going to squint. <laughs> Nobody wants to see this, you know. <laughs> All right. So that's the first part of the test. Right away, they both read 1.000. Hmm, interesting. So what if we now have a sugar solution? And this is some unknown amount of sugar. It's like half a cup, probably. It was up to about there. So it's like a quarter, a little over a quarter cup, maybe. Put into some water. Same temperature water. They both came out of the faucet at roughly the same time. I have the spoon in it for mixing and to be able to tell them apart because, you know, it's water with sugar. I can't tell the difference. So I'm just going to pour it. Who says you can't learn new tricks? <laughs> I usually do it this way, too. That's the thing. Actually, it's because she sets it up that way. This is a nice little trick also to protect your glass hydrometer when you put it into your tub for sanitization. All right, so we have it floating. So now that it's floating, let me bring it over here, give it a little spin, even though there's really no bubbles. I just want to make sure that it's right. And let's see here. One point, oh, that looks like 1.05, 2, 4, 1.056. Okay, so this is just sugar water. There's no alcohol in this. That's the next aspect to this test in just a couple of minutes. So 1.056, and let's set that down and dump that back in. Now, one thing I will say, I just had to go through taking a sample, pouring it in, pouring it out, versus I could just reach in here and grab a sample. Imagine that was my finished bottle. That's very convenient, I have to admit, one drop, Put it on there, smoosh it down, remove the glasses, and give it a read. And this is reading it at, oh wow, 1.058. Now, this, right off the bat, the refractometer, gives me a much more precise way to see that number. Go ahead and take a look in there. All you do is you hold it up to the light and you'll see where a blue line ends and a white line begins. It's very clear delineated oh, wow. where that number is. When I looked at the hydrometer, it was a little bit iffy. Could it have been 1058 instead of 1056? Yes, absolutely. It very well could have been, especially using the smaller cylinder. That tells me right there that a refractometer may be slightly more accurate. So you got 1.058? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that tells me right there that the refractometer may be slightly more accurate in actual usage. However, the plot thickens because up till now, all we've been measuring is actual density of the liquid. There's been no alcohol present. Now let's get something that has some alcohol in it and some sugars in it so that we can take a reading with the hydrometer and with the refractometer. And you'll see where this is where they change. So here we have a mead. For those curious, this is my holes versus nothing mead test. This was the no holes added. Yeah, the nothing mead test. Remember we did that a while back? There's probably going to be a link or something up here. But anyway, this started at 1.130 and ended at 1.040. This one ac actually got French oaked. And you're going to see this in an upcoming video where we teach people how to do a basic bottling session. All right, so what I want to do is get a reading off of this. And that means taking a sample. So I'm going to use the Todd and get our sample. Derek is holding it in there just above. We're pulling out the sample now. Like I say, this should read somewhere in the 1.040 range, I'm assuming. I don't think it's changed much since last time. Let me put that a little bit lower. And, eh, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drink this sample when we're done. So oxygenation is not really an issue. So one thing is I got some foam here, some bubbles. And this is one of the difficulties that you will run into using a hydrometer is they're not so accurate when there's a lot of foam. It's really hard to read. And the reading already changed from two seconds ago when there was foam. So I'm trying to get rid of as much as possible to get as close to accurate of a reading as I can get. And going right to the meniscus here, I'm going to say that is dead on 1.040, okay? I'm looking at it from underneath to see where the line is. So it may actually be like 1.038. And that's the hard part with using a hydrometer. It may sound like I'm leaning towards a refractometer. Not really. Two points can mean about a quarter of a percentage point of ABV in the final idea. So if you're wrong, a, half, a quarter point this time and a quarter point on the final gravity, you're off by like half a point of, of percentage. It really doesn't even make that much difference. 
somebody actually told me recently that uh, according to can you just hold that Dutch law beer makers are allowed to be off by 10% of the the final ABV that they give so if they gave a 5% on the label it can be off by as much as half a point either way so that means it can be 4.5 to 5.5 and still be legal as a home brewer I'm pretty good with that. I mean, that, that, that's all good. So we were at 1.040 ish. Let's, let's see what the uh, refractometer says. It's not going back in anything. That's good meat. That French oak is awesome. Oh my God. That's amazing. That's why I'm drinking the sample. So. According to the refractometer, first, the line is a little bit fuzzy this time, which that's less than, than helpful to me. But it is right dead between 1.080 and 1.075. So that means I'm going to call this, uh, you know, it's, it's 1.077. So wait a minute. 1.077? Now you can see why people get so confused when they start using a, hydro a refractometer as opposed to a hydrometer for final gravity. But there is a way to fix that. Let's see just how accurate that system is. And it requires an app. I just so happened to have found one. And this is brewersfriend.com. Okay, I'm actually using their website to do it because their app doesn't do this. Um, well, not the, the cheapy one that I didn't feel. I didn't feel like paying for it, okay? Um, their free app doesn't actually do this. So instead, I'm going to be putting in my correction, what I, that's all I really want to do. I just want to find out what my final gravity is. However, to do that, I need to know the bricks, not the actual gravity, because this works by bricks. <sighs> this is some of the frustration that I have with doing the refractometer, is I have to use a whole different you system. You don't have a sample on there anymore. I don't need a sample, because uh... the way this chart works is I can just look at the 1.077 line and know that it's going to be 19, like 18.8 bricks seems like no no 1.077 that's like 18.4 bricks i'm kind of estimating that because eyeballing where 77 line is i could take another reading but that's still close enough 18.4 i said right i think so i'll put my glasses back on so i can see what i'm doing now there's a thing called a wart correction factor and this is where I think there's some subjectivity to this whole system. If you don't know your work correction factor, then I have it at one right now. If I don't know what mine is, which is the way this reads wart and the way it adjusts bricks versus specific gravity. Right now, this is reading at a 1.045 final gravity. Is that right? I don't know. 1.04 as a wart correction factor seems to be pretty common. So if I put that in, it comes out at 1.040. That is fascinating because that means with that wart correction factor, assuming that is correct for this refractometer. That and this are the same. They give exactly the same results. For years, I have been dissuading people from using refractometers because I was told and I tried to figure it out one time that the calculators all give differing results. Well, they do. I actually checked. They do. There's various all across the board, I spent, what, three hours the other day? Uh, a rather getting... significant time with many colorful explicit. Oh, wow. Because <laughs> some of them just don't work at all. Some of them give you, like, horrible numbers. Others sort of worked. This one from Brewer's Friend actually seemed to give a pretty consistent result across the board. A little bit of testing. No, I did not actually put them head-to-head, -head, but I was playing with the refractometer to get used to using it. I have to say... It's a little bit more mental gymnastics and a couple more hurdles to jump across, but I can actually take a bricks reading at the end and this will convert it for me as well as do my uh, final um, ABV, which it's using a, a very simple calculation. Um, but which is better? And I think that's the subjective thing. In the very beginning for an original gravity reading, a refractometer may just be better. By the way, in instead of you holding that, I'll just... Take care of that for me. I'll, I'll just get to drinking. <laughs> oh, that's just good. Okay. So for your original gravity, a refractometer is probably better. However, there is one thing to know. When I take a 100 mil sample, I'm getting a large sample and it's being averaged out for the hydrometer. A refractometer is taking one sample. 
it could be different here versus here versus here. And especially for final gravities, it may have different concentrations. So that's something to be aware of too. It gets a little bit tricky because you don't want to stir it up to get your final gravity because you might have lease or you know other sediment in there. In the very beginning, it's probably best. But then towards the end, I still think a hydrometer is going to be more accurate for a final gravity simply because of that aspect. But all in all, I'm kind of impressed. I may actually start playing around the refractometer more and maybe I can get used to it. Maybe I can figure out a system that gets me a more consistent result rather than having to take three readings every time, which doesn't make a lot of sense either. I mean, this is only going to reach so far into that mead. Speaking of. Oh, that's just so good. French oak, wonderful thing. And this is just my traditional mead. So it's just really simple stuff, but very, very, very good. Anyway, so that is basically the answer to that. We've busted another myth that using the online calculators for refractometers are completely inaccurate. They're really not. And the one that I used, I can put in original gravity, final gravity. It calculates all the rest, gives me an ABV. It's really simple to use. Is it simpler than doing it using a hydrometer? I think that depends on the person. For some people, it might be. For other people, maybe not. The thing I don't like is having to switch to bricks, which I've never really used it, but it's very common in winemaking. And it literally just means the percentage of sugar in a liquid, which is awesome to actually know because you can calculate a lot of things using that. Like if you're at 10 bricks, that literally means 10% of what you have there is sugar. Okay, that gives me a lot of other math things that I can work on, but that's probably for another video. By the way, see these people over here? They are awesome. Without their support, this channel might not exist. So we want to thank them and say, really, we thank you. And if you like this video, look up. There's another video up there. You might like that one too.